Hello, my name is Fred Wilson from St. Peter Crever and I'll be with you in physics. So today we're going to start our discussion in electronics. By starting with the meaning of electronics. Electronics is a branch of physics which deals with the start of behaviors and movement of electrons in a material. These materials include conductors, insulators, vacuum gears, or semiconductors. Now, in order to discuss further about these conductors and insulators, we discuss them by categorizing them in terms of how they conduct electricity. When we call a material uh, a conductor, we are talking about the materials which allow the flow of current through them easily. These materials include, most of them are metals and all materials which can allow the flow of current through them in a simple way. The second type of materials are those which we call insulators. Insulators are those materials which mostly they do not allow flow of current through them easily. These materials are with an example of wood. We know that when we connect a wood to an electric source or a different part of an electric field, there will be no current flowing through that material. Also we have materials such as glass. Also these are examples of material which will not conduct electricity. The third type of material, according to these categories, are those which are known as are semiconductors. Semiconductors are those materials with electrical conductivity between conductors and insulators. These semiconductors examples, we have elementary examples such as silicon. We have another example which is elementary uh, examples is germanium. We also have another example as diamond, diamond as element. But also we have another examples of uh, semiconductors which are in terms of compound, such as silicon carbide, silicon carbide. So on this level, we are going to discuss further on semiconductors, but starting with the meaning of semiconductors as we talked the area, semiconductors are those materials which has electrical conductivity between insulators and conductors. How is that? This is because semiconductor they act as insulators at low temperature. They act as insulators at very low temperature and they act as conductors starting from room temperature. They act as conductors starting from room temperature. So to know about this further is first you have to understand about uh, energy band of the material, energy band of a material. Now what is energy band of a solid? To understand further, you should know that any band of a solid first we have to start in atomic level. In atomic level, every electron occupy its energy at the place it is from the nucleus. So starting there, electrons, they exist at a stable orbit near the nucleus. They exist at this stable yeah, orbit at a, near the nucleus with its discrete energy. They have a certain value of energy which is not changeable. In order to be at that energy level, they should have that amount of energy. So, in order to form a solid material then, in order to form a solid material, a cluster solid material, which is what we are dealing with, because we cannot uh, uh, conduct electricity in a single atom, we have to connect it in uh, a very large number of atoms to form a single crystal. We say electrons which has equivalencies of energy, they have the same energy, they attract each other to bind one another near the nucleus of every atoms in a material to form energies of that level of electrons on the entire crystal. So these electrons, after combining together, the electrons from the same energy level, they form a band of energy and the same electrons which are, are binded together, attracted together. Now this band of all energy from these electrons is what which is known as a band level of energies from these materials. So energy band in a solid, it is grouped in three groups according to the level of electrons it has. 
level of energy electrons has. Starting with the first one, which is uh, a valence band. A valence band, we say this is a lowest, a lowest energy band, which is almost completely filled with, uh, with electrons. At this level, all electrons are there having the lowest energy in an atom. Normally, we're talking about electrons which are quite very near to the nucleus of an atom. The second band, second band is a conduction band. A conduction band, this is the upper, uppermost band of, an, uh, of, of, of electrons, upper energy band of electrons. They are found after the energy level from a uh, valence band. From this level, depending on the material, it sometimes might be empty or sometimes might be filled with electrons, but it's not completely filled. It is containing few electrons in it, has few electrons in it, and sometimes it is almost empty. For other materials, such as a insulator, it is completely empty. This conduction band is what which is responsible in conduction of electricity. So electrons in this conduction band are those which is free to carry charges from one point to another. The band between these two, the band between these two, conduction band and valence band is what which is known as forbidden energy gap. It is known as forbidden energy gap because from this one, it is just a gap. No electrons with any energy can be found in this energy gap. So from this one, we say no electrons can exist in this level with any energy from this one. Now these three bands, conduction band, uh, valence band, and forbidden gap, are the ones which distinguish materials, are the ones which give us the type that we have the conductors, we have insulators, and we have semiconductors, as it can be shown in the diagram I'm going to show here. I'm going to show it by using the diagram how energy bands are reduced there. For a conductor, the energy band, you can just say they are only two energy bands, but normally they are three energy bands in this one. But this one being the lowest one is what which is known as a valence band. And this one, which is the upper one, is known as a conduction band. In a conductor, a valence band and a conduction band, they overlap one another. You can see here there's no gap between a valence band and an energy band. But this uh, separation here is what which is known as Fermi level, which you call it energy level not. It is known as Fermi level. Now Fermi level, we say this is a maximum energy level at which an electron from a lowest energy band can have. But for insulators, for insulators, we have the same energy band, but between them, we have very large, we have very large gap between them. So the upper one is a conduction band, is a conduction band. The lower one is a valence, is a valence band. But between them, we have a forbidden gap, a forbidden, a forbidden gap. Now here in this forbidden gap is the point where we say no electrons either from conduction band or from valence band can exist. So electron can either be in a valence band or can either be in what? In a conduction, in a conduction band. So this one is for what? For insulators. Now for semiconductor, 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 we say semiconductors have the properties between insulators and, and conductors. This means that for semiconductor, it will either have the properties of insulators or the properties of what? Of semiconductor. Rather, it will have the properties between those two, which means that the level or the gap between the valence band and conduction band will be very thin. The gap between valence band and conduction band will be very thin. This means that electrons, if they gain enough energy, from valence band, they can jump straight to the right, conduction band. And when we have electrons in a conduction band, it will be able to conduct electricity 
uh, through them. But for insulators, no electrons can be found in the conduction band. And we say that the conduction band electrons in this level are the one which is responsible for conduction of what? Conduction of electricity. So these are how we differentiate this material conduction, uh, conductors, insulators, and semiconductors in terms of energy, energy band. So, in order to finish the session, I'm going to leave you with one question. I uh, use the comment section below to answer this question. The question is, what is forbidden and gap, and why it is known as forbidden energy level? Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe.